Hey everybody, Adam here. Hope everyone is doing well. So, just a little over three weeks ago, I was bitten by a rattlesnake. And long story short, uh, hang on, there's a friggin' helicopter flying over. It's just a helicopter, stupid. My dog's going after this thing. So long story short, it was nighttime, low visibility. There was a rattlesnake uh, right outside of our doorstep. My dog was outside barking at it. So I figured I better go out there and you know get him. Went out there, inserted myself into the situation, got way too close to the snake because I couldn't actually see the thing and uh, ended up receiving a pretty nasty bite on my right thumb, which is almost all healed up at this point. Uh, it's still a little swollen and I can't quite move it all the way, but should be okay in another week or two. So what was it like being bitten? Well, first I should say the snake bit me so fast and everything in general just happened so fast. I didn't even notice that it bit me. I know that sounds crazy, but think about it like this. The last time I went to a clinic to get a shot, I rolled up my sleeve. The nurse said, are you ready? I said, yeah, I looked straight ahead. And before I even knew anything happened, it was over. And I was like, wait, that's it, I'm done? You already did it? She's like, yeah, that's it. Didn't even feel the shot. But about an hour later, my arm felt a little sore where I got the shot. So it's not really the bite itself that is painful, it's the venom. So maybe one or two minutes after I was bitten, my thumb felt like it was broken like somebody took a rock and bashed it. And it was all quite confusing, because I'm thinking to myself, how the, how the hell did I break my thumb? And for a moment, I actually thought maybe I accidentally whacked it on a rock, because we have a lot of large rocks outside in the front of our house where this all happened. And there was a little bit of blood on it, not a lot, just a little, like kind of like I'd scraped it. But then within another one or two minutes, all of my fingers felt like they were broken. And then my whole hand felt like it was broken. And then my fist swelled up to the size of a grapefruit and it looked like a grapefruit. And my arm started to swell and everything started to burn. And that searing, burning pain started to intensify. And this is when I realized, I think I've got a serious problem. So, my wife took me to the nearest ER, and by the time the ER doctor saw me, my arm was so huge in the worst way possible, she took one look at it and said, honey, you're going to get on a helicopter and fly to Tucson, because we don't have enough anti-venom here to treat that. It's at this point that panic started to set in, because <laughs> I'm thinking a helicopter isn't, isn't that what they do when someone's about to die? Like a gunshot victim or someone who's been horribly maimed and crippled in an awful car accident? So I'm, now I'm thinking to myself, am I, am I dying? And yeah, I was dying. <laughs> so <laughs> nobody told me that, but you know, I started to connect the dots. <clears throat> so uh, as we were waiting for the helicopter to arrive, I think they gave me one dose of anti-venom, at least one dose. And then when the helicopter got there, the flight nurse gave me 10 cc's of fentanyl, which barely did anything. And at this point, the pain is really, the whole time the pain's intensifying, but now it's really turning into something else. It hadn't reached its peak yet. That wouldn't happen for another Oh, many hours but it was already the most painful thing I'd ever felt in my life hands down there's just no comparison and I've had a lot of I've had a lot of other injuries none of them come close to this pain and to describe the pain overall it was like somebody 
smashed my hand with a sledgehammer and then stuck it in a fire and just held it there for 36 hours. That's the best way I can describe it. Except there is one little difference, which was quite weird. Under the skin, the inside of my hand and my arm just felt like they were absolutely on fire. Felt like there was literally acid flowing through my veins, just burning up all of the tissue because there pretty much was. And simultaneously, it felt like my bones were crushed. But the surface of my skin felt cold. So it's quite bizarre. Anyway, so they get me on the helicopter. And I'm not gonna lie, the helicopter ride was dope. Even though I was in a stretcher, I still had pretty much a 180 degree view. Kind of like being in an IMAX theater. And uh, they don't fly as high as airplanes. So you can see the terrain the whole time. It's pretty cool. That's beside the point. Oh, it's also very loud. You can't really talk. It's like, doo -doo -doo. anyway, I'm being too discursive here. So after about 30 minutes or so, we land at the hospital in Tucson. Um, as soon as they took me off of the helicopter, I got another 50 cc's of fentanyl. Again, pain is just ramping up the whole time. After that, they took me straight into the trauma center. Now, this is when everything really starts to turn into a bad fever dream. I'm on an empty stomach because this happened before I ate dinner the night before, so I didn't have any food in my stomach. I didn't have any fluids in me. They won't let you, they won't even let you drink water in case they have to perform an emergency surgery. At least that's what I was told. And now I've got rattlesnake venom and anti-venom and strong drugs in my system. And I'm tired because now it's, by this time, it's like really early the following morning. Um, you know, like right before sunrise probably. So I'm just completely out of it. Um, oh, and the anti-venom, just a fun fact. They get that stuff from horses. So at this point I've now got snake venom and um, horse antibodies in my blood. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, I'm in the trauma center. I think I was there for at least two hours, but it might have been three or four or five. I'm really not sure. Felt like a long time. Uh, there was one doctor and one nurse who were checking on me pretty frequently, but there were do dozens of other people who were coming in and out of the room. Various other doctors and specialists running tests, asking me questions. I was x-rayed, sonogram. Um, at one point, a team, a whole team of to toxicologists came in, at least like six or seven of them. And they were asking me tons of questions and they wanted to check out the wound and look at my arm, check out my back. Because the venom, it just starts working its way linear, linear, I can't say that word, in a straight line. <laughs> it starts working its way, see it must have done something to my speech too. It starts working its way from where you were bitten, just all the way up the limb into your torso. So, got somewhere up to around my shoulder and a little bit down the side of my back. So, it's at this point right after the uh, tox team talked to me and took a look at me that my pain is now hitting the peak. And uh, my wife even told me that when she got to the hospital and she's walking down the hallway, she could hear me screaming and groaning. And I was. <laughs> um, and yeah, the pain meds weren't doing anything. It's also at this point that the ER doctor took another look at my thumb where I was bitten. And bear in mind, the whole time, so at this point, it's blistered over and it's just swelling up. It looks like I've got a purple water balloon on my thumb. And she looks at it and she goes, man, that is the worst snake bite I've ever seen. 
And I was like, thanks. I feel reassured. That's great. Then she cut me out of my shirt so she could put a gown on me and do the other things that she needed to do. Uh, did another sonogram. And the reason they were doing sonograms was actually so they could take my pulse because I was so swollen. That's the only way they could read my pulse. Um, so yeah, I got me in a gown, another sonogram, and then they sent me off to the intensive care unit where I spent the next three days. And I actually took some videos while I was there, so I'll show you what it was like. Uh, these, I started taking the videos after being there for about a day and a half. So at this point, I was able to get up and move around a little bit again. Uh, prior to that, I was pretty much just flat on my back the whole time. But yeah, I'll show you what it was like. And don't worry, it's not graphic. You're not gonna see anything gross. It's really kind of boring. But anyway, here's what that was like. So here is my ICU room. <clears throat> Been in here for two days. Uh, they finally let me get out of bed a little while ago so I can kind of stand up and move around a bit. There's all my numbers. Well, you can't see my blood pressure because I'm not hooked up to that anymore, but yeah, they uh, had me on IV for a while. I, I still have the, I have two IVs in my arms. I'm just not hooked up to the drip at the moment, but I uh, got 20 doses of anti-venom and about to get another half dose. I also got magnesium and probably some other stuff I can't remember or wasn't even aware of. <clears throat> yeah, this is it. Uh, hopefully I'll be getting out of here uh, sometime later today to get moved to a regular room. And uh, then I'll have a lot more mobility and independence. I won't be as confined to a bed like I am in here most of the time. Uh, current state of my hand where I was bit. So my blister popped last night while I was sleeping. So now we've just been periodically wrapping it with gauze and then changing the gauze once it gets all saturated with blood and fluid. Um, arm's still pretty black and blue, black and blue and swollen. Uh, you know, we got some mobility, <clears throat> but definitely not like total use of my hand again. But yeah, that's the current state of things. And, uh, Maybe I'll uh, show you my next room when I get over there. Okay, so now I'm getting my 20th and a half dose of antivenom. And this is gonna take about another 30 minutes. And uh, when I'm done with that, then they're gonna draw some more blood, check my lab work, and then hopefully I'll be going to a regular room. All right, so here I am out of the ICU in what they call a floor room. Uh, not much different, pretty much the same really. You see I had a bunch of fruit for breakfast. And uh, yeah, it's day three. They're probably gonna send me home today. Here's a look at my hand. You see it's still quite swollen and bruised. That's just gonna take time probably could be up to like another three weeks before all that swelling subsides. But that's where I'm at now, yeah. Another uh, maybe eight or nine hours in here and then hopefully I'll be going home. So, first two days that I was in the hospital, various doctors and nurses all told me, we'll probably let you out in like three days, maybe five max. So I'm, I'm thinking like, okay, three to five days, that's not bad at all. I'm also under the assumption that they mean 
my hands are going to be back to normal or pretty close to it by the time they let me out. That's just the impression I was given. And in fact, on the second day, one physician even told me that. I was, I was, I was a little concerned about that. He was like, oh, no, no, when, your hand will be fine when we, let, when we discharge you. Don't worry about it. So I'm like, okay. Well, on day three, when they were said they were thinking about releasing me, I realized that wasn't true at all because I still couldn't do jack crap with this hand or my arm. I was pretty much just like locked in this position the whole time. Effectively, my arm and hand were paralyzed. They weren't literally paralyzed in the classical sense because most rattlesnakes, all except for one, they have cytotoxic venom. And this is how we know it was a diamondback and not a Mojave. Because if it was a Mojave, which looks almost identical to a diamondback, the venom would have been neurotoxic and it would have paralyzed me. Because neurotoxic venom, that damages your nervous system. So your brain can't communicate with the afflicted area. But cytotoxic venom, which contains myotoxins and hemotoxins, that damages your tissues and your blood. So your skin, your blood cells, your platelets, your blood vessels, tendons, muscles, all that stuff is getting chewed up. And it does that by breaking bonds between uh, cells. So it really is just pretty much, oh, I don't know, dissolving slash tearing up your muscles. And in my case, they were damaged so badly that they just they just didn't work anymore. I couldn't, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't do anything with my hand or my arm. And I didn't want to because it hurt like hell. So, I realized they're going to be sending me home and I'm going to still be like this for a long time. Actually, at that point, I got my phone out, did my own research, and realized, okay, it's not going to be three to five days, it's probably going to be three to five weeks, which has turned out to be the case. So yet again, I'm starting to panic. A, I'm wondering, am I ever going to get my hand back? Like, what if, like, what if the damage is permanent and I just can't use this hand or even my right arm at all anymore? I'm also starting to freak out because, as you can maybe tell from just looking at the scenery around me. Where I live, it's not exactly um, kind to people with disabilities, nor is my lifestyle conducive to someone that only has one functioning arm. So I'm thinking, how the hell am I gonna go back to my normal life? Like, I can't go home like this. And if you saw the tiny house that my wife and I live in, you would probably understand the situation a lot better like it's very it's a very hard place to live when you only have one good arm so I further started to realize sorry there's just a truck driving by I further started to realize what a problem this is going to be when I texted my wife and I told her they're going to be releasing me later today will you please bring me a shirt because of course the shirt I went in with was cut up, destroyed, thrown in the garbage, and uh, I didn't want to leave the hospital shirtless like a jabroni. So, hey, will you please bring me a shirt? Didn't specify what kind of shirt or anything. Yeah, sure thing. And then 30 minutes later, I realized, I texted her again because I thought, oh no, if she brings me a pullover shirt like what I'm wearing now, I won't be able to put it on because my arm is literally just stuck like this. So I text her again, hey, don't bring a t-shirt or a pullover, you know, bring me a button-up shirt. Okay. So she shows up, she's got a button-up shirt. And I told her, I said, I don't want any help getting it on. I want to see if I can do this myself. So after about one or two minutes of contorting my body into all sorts of pretzel shapes, I managed to get the sleeves around my arms and my shoulders. Then I looked down and I thought, son of a gun, how am I gonna button up the buttons? So <laughs> I spent probably another five minutes just 
ever so slowly with nothing but my left hand doing one button at a time until I finally got the shirt buttoned up. But then I realized like, this is like I'm happy to leave the hospital, but going home, this is really gonna suck because putting that shirt on was way too hard. <laughs> I'm gonna have a lot of other stuff that I'm gonna have to figure out and navigate that's gonna be a whole lot harder than just buttoning up a shirt. So, first first four or five days home, that was somewhat of a nightmare. Um, I spent most of my time, thankfully, it was just a coincidence, my wife had the week off from work that week, so she was around to take care of a lot of things. So I wasn't entirely on my own for that first week, which was, yeah, I was lucky. But yeah, I spent most of the time just sitting in a chair with my arm on a pillow, eating mostly fruits and vegetables to the point of being uncomfortably full while also taking lots of supplements and drinking herbal tea because, you know, I had a serious, I had what they would call, um, they call it intense tissue trauma, basically just a serious wound that needed to heal. And if you want to heal quickly, uh, especially if we're talking about like repairing tissue, in particular collagen, you have to eat a lot. You need the calories, you need vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin E, blah, blah, blah. So you gotta take in a lot of nutrient, nutrient dense food if you wanna hurry the process up. And I'm not really a big eater, so I honestly didn't enjoy it very much, but I do think it helped. After, after that first week home, then very gently, gradually, cautiously, <laughs> I started to get back to more of a semi-typical day-to-day routine. Uh, Despite what it might look like, I'm still not completely back to my normal self and my normal routine because I'm a builder, but I can't build anything right now because I can't use tools with this hand. Uh, certainly not power tools. It's the, the vibrations of the tools, the force of like driving a screw into a board or pushing a saw through a cut. It's just it's too much. My hand is still too damaged and weak. So last time I attempted to do that, I realized I was just hurting myself. So it's probably gonna be another week or two, I'm guessing, before I can get back to building. Also, for those of you that follow my channel and have been following the build series, this is the primary reason you haven't seen anything from me, from me in a while. Uh, I was actually going to record a video right when this whole thing happened. Uh, happened on a Tuesday night and I was planning on recording a video later that week so yeah it's probably gonna be realistically it might be another two or three weeks before I have a new building video up but anyway so moral of the story is venomous snakes stay away from them if you see a rattlesnake or you hear one move the opposite direction. If you have to get your dog away from one, don't. Your dog's an idiot, just let them die. It's not worth losing your limb or losing your life. I'm kidding about that last part. Don't let your dog die. Also, by the way, since I know everybody's wondering, my dog is fine. More people have asked me how my dog is doing than I'm doing, which is fair enough because he is much cuter and more likable than me, so that tracks. Yeah, anyway, that's my tail. Get it? Because, like, snake tail. Oh, I didn't say that. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up here, and I will see everyone in the next video. Peace.